All right. So, welcome to episode eight of the series. We've swapped out our team a little bit in order to activate some of the uh, <laughs> options for talking to people as we go around the screen. Um, And here's the introduction of the Superhuman Registration Act. Um, Which would mean the politicians get to tell us who the bad guys are. We need to make sure this thing doesn't happen. To that end, we're heading down to Washington. I've been offered a chance to testify before a congressional... Now, in this version of things... I, I'm not totally familiar with the Civil War comics. And by that, I mean I've never read the Civil War comics. Uh, I... I'm pretty sure that this is an adapted part that the uh, the Superhuman Registration Act was a rather quick reaction to something that that they'll portray later. But in order to have another gameplay level and give us something to do, we are going to go save Washington from people who are trying to perhaps push the Superhuman Registration Act. Uh, into effect. So we're evacuating the capital here. Um, we got armed shield agents on one side and armed uh, terrorists on the other. And we are the X-Men. Or at least one of the possible uh, combinations of characters you could use in this game to get the X-Men. And this is, again, another way you know that this was not a first playthrough. This was a legendary follow-up playthrough. Um, because that's Jean Grey over there on the right in the... Uh, it sort of looks like green and yellow. Um, I know you can get her blue and yellow X-Men suit as an alt costume. I think this is her Phoenix suit. Um, going around right now, and we are being Storm, because Storm unlocks uh, her alternate costume by, I think, leading the X-Men through a stage, or at least that's what I think I'm going for here. Um, otherwise, I'm just being Storm because she's powerful. But because she's about to die, we're going to go change to a character who that's not likely to happen. Uh, and we've got Wolverine here. And I believe Wolver one of Wolverine's unlock things is is behind using a particular move a number of times, which is why I think I was doing all that diving. And now the game's going to introduce these little bombs. Now these bombs are proximity based. They will go off if we go near them. It's about as much beard as you get to see on Logan, I, th I think. Although, it could just be his costume. Yeah, and at this point I'm still working on uh, getting all the defensive emblems and achievements, so we're going to be responding to things in a defensive fashion at least for the first part of the playthrough, and then we'll move on to unlocking whatever the next set is after that. But it gives you an idea of something what people are thinking uh, with us jumping into it here. They're immediately thinking that this is some sort of retribution for something that we've already done. It isn't really like that. But of course we'll have to it'll take us to the end of the level to figure that out. Alright, now I'm getting <laughs> kind of in the middle of a mosh pit here. Which you would think Wolverine would be right at home with, but even he doesn't have an endless supply of health. Shoot 
shield characters. Um, we've met them. Bef we've run into them before. You've got to get rid of the shield before you can really do a lot of damage to them. In the original Mar Marvel Ultimate Alliance game, uh, you could still hurt shield characters, provided that your character's uh, abilities were leveled up enough. For some reason, I could get Spider-Man's web bullets to penetrate the shields. I don't know if that was a thing that was supposed to happen or not. But, uh, okay, so now I've got Storm on low power. I've got Wolverine on low power. We still have, have Fusion Attack available to us right at the moment. We need one of those. Getting close. Okay, we got one now. And given the situation, I think we're probably going to be looking for an opportunity to use a clearing attack. Also, if we just take a little time and let Wolverine heal, um, he'll get back. And now meet our next uh, new mechanic, the rocket launcher characters. And I got my limits, Bob. Uh, don't recommend walking right into the rockets. Probably not a good way to go about it. So I'm just going to go and try to slice heads off. So, um, again, it, today is February 8th. Uh, this is being recorded the same day uh, as Episode 7 was recorded. So we're about a week out from the Kansas City Chiefs having won the Super Bowl. Um, and during the Kansas City Chiefs uh, Super Bowl, well, okay. During their game, I mean, obviously they they won the game, but that only happened in the fourth quarter. Uh, there were a series of advertisements during the Super Bowl, like they always are, for a number of different things. Uh, in this case, Disney released a about 90 second ad that included footage from its uh, Disney Plus shows the ones that are coming out soon. I mean, just some on the Disney Plus front, you know, there's been uh, a little bit of bad news. The Hawkeye show is in has, is uh, in hiatus. Uh, primarily. Well, actually, no one... I, I haven't heard a reason why the Hawkeye show has been delayed. My guess is that the person that they wanted to play, Kate Bishop, has decided to play hardball with them uh, about a contract. The last time I heard uh, a rumor like this was when they approached, assumed, uh, the rumor was that they had approached Jason Statham about being bullseye in the Daredevil show. Hey, you ruined my vacation. it's Deadpool. And you, dumb as nail shield clones. I saw what you did to those cherry blossoms back there. You think those things grow on trees? And you, you think it makes me less of a man if I came here for the cherry blossom festival, huh? You're laughing with your eyes. I can see it. So now we have to fight Deadpool, just because. But, I mean, that's kind of okay, you know. Deadpool certainly picks, you know, that, that would be sort of a random thing to have happen. Um, Don't mess with the old knucklehead. This game is 
the I think really the last game perhaps where Deadpool was not voiced by Nolan North. Um, the guy who voiced Deadpool in this game, in this game, whose name escapes me at the moment, was also his voice in X Men Legends Two and uh, the first Marvel Ultimate Alliance game. So I mean, it, it's not like he did he came from absolutely nowhere, but I think that you know we've seen that uh, Deadpool is. Or we've kind of had Nolan North as Deadpool for the better part of a decade in most of our interesting uh, or most games. I mean, in Deadpool's own game, in Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions, uh, in some of the Marvel Capcom games where Deadpool is a character, you, you get Nolan North. Now, we we actually did lose uh, Wolverine and... Or, Actually, might have lost... Did we lose everybody? No, we just lost Wolverine. And it... It turns out I am using the alternate costume on Jean Grey. I just couldn't tell from the, the way that the colors work here. Um, and we get to see Maria Hill for a second time. I'll take things from here. Titania Man seems to be behind all this. He just made off with some senators and took them underground. We'll cover the capital. You get down to the subway and pursue that tin-plated Russian and his pals. Can't spare anyone. I'm sure you can handle it on your own. Now get going. And turns out that on, Iron Man, Man villain Titanium Man is behind it all. Well, at least so it seems. Um, geez. So I guess that's on my to-do list thing to double check who Deadpool's voice actor for this game was, because uh, Deadpool's voice actor in this game actually had a voice role in Shattered Dimensions, where he was the voice of all of Deadpool's uh, fans, who were basically the enemies that Spider-Man fights in the Deadpool level. So that that was kind of a kind of a neat little callback. And no, I'm not angry at drink machines at all. Don't don't even don't even try to suggest that I have anything against drink machines. So we still don't have enough to resurrect uh, Wolverine, but we're going to work on it. Uh, Deadpool as a escort character uh, again. He also has the ability to heal himself, so, you know, he's not a bad character to have around, but usually these escort characters don't stick around for uh, very long. But if you really want uh, to be kind of crazy, this would be the only opportunity in the game where you can have Deadpool and Deadpool uh, running around at the same time. And you could even, uh, if you've unlocked Deadpool's alternate costume, which I'm not particularly a fan of in this game, you can even have, you know, have him sporting both costumes. There's an, another moment later in the game, which we'll talk about when we get there, where you can also kind of double up on characters. In fact... Uh, once you've completed the game and you're running through it on a legendary playthrough, there are lots of, there are actually a handful of situations where you can have uh, characters, or the same character doing different things. Like, once we get into the Civil War, you know, Iron Man and Captain America will be mini-bosses for the other side, but if you've beaten the game, then you can actually have 
Captain America in a fight where you're fighting Captain America, or you can have Iron Man in a fight where you're fighting Iron Man. It's not quite as cool as uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance did it, where if you had Doctor Doom uh, fighting Doctor Doom in the last, uh, in the final boss fight of that game, you know, Doctor Doom would have a conversation with himself where he basically says, look, this is stupid and it doesn't work and you shouldn't do it. And so I mean, th that's kind of a kind of a neat thing. But I got distracted from the Disney Plus shows, um, which don't really have much to do with X Men, I guess. I, I guess we need to kind of stay on an X Men uh, sort of tangent since we've that, that's the guys we've got running around down here. Um, not really much word on X-Men as what they're going to do with it, obviously. Some people are looking at WandaVision to perhaps be the introduction of the mutants. Um, I don't really think that's going to be the case. Because uh, even though the trailers for that have shown the characters that would theoretically be either Wiccan in speed or... Potentially, uh, Wanda envisions two kids from the last Avengers story, which were a different set of kids. And Titanium's men are dragging off Stan Lee, of all people. And then we get our Independence Day scene, sort of. We're not fighting Titanium Man straight up yet. And this is the last fight. Uh, this is our last fight with... Actually, no, we... I think... Never mind, we get to keep Deadpool for one more sequence after this. But there's you know, speculation that WandaVision is going to be in some way the, the introduction of the mutants, and nobody's really... I personally don't think that's going to be the case. Um, I think it would be cool if, however, whatever exploration of Wanda's mind or whatever we're doing in WandaVision that's bringing us these sitcom, uh, you know, living environments... If she was to conjure an image of her father, and it turned out to be whoever, who, however they're going to handle Magneto, uh, that would be kind of cool. But and it would also be kind of neat if she was to bring Quicksilver back um, in some of these episodes. We, we already know that Vision... Her version of Vision in these things is probably not real, but mainly in her mind. Okay, we gained some stronger uh, enemy characters here. I want to say they've got rocket launchers, but I could be wrong. Uh, now Iceman and Storm are weak. Of course, we were both of those characters earlier, and now I've reverted back to Wolverine since we brought him back after a successful fusion strike. So, got that going on. Honestly, I I think, and I I don't know if I've brought this up before. I think that the X Men are going to be brought about as a side effect of Thanos's snap. Um, you know, the, Bruce Banner made the comment that the Infinity Gauntlet was generating some sort of gamma radiation, 
Um, and that. Um, and gamma radiation has. Gamma radiation might have the ability to mutate uh, DNA in some way. And it, it may not necessarily. Um, it may not create mutants in the sense that. like that in so much as it might activate something that was already there in the genetic code to turn the mutants on. Um, and I think that's how you, that's one way you could go about getting the mutants. Um, I don't specifically know about specific mutants. I think I mentioned before the idea of sort of trying to recast Magneto's backstory becomes difficult if, you know, the further you get away from the Holocaust, the older Magneto has to be in order to make that work. And maybe maybe it's time to kind of wean him off of it. I mean, I'm not saying you would do this, but, uh, you know, to but to try to find a new way to to present Magneto. I, 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 I want to avoid using time travel or whatever as a device in this sense, and so, like shoving Magneto forward in time. Um, although they could theoretically do that, um, but you know, I just wouldn't like to see it. So with a few with a few X Men characters like, say Wolverine and Magneto, whose backstories would kind of have to be developed, uh, to make any sense of why pre Snap they would have been around for a long time, because that's kind of important to their characters. Um, just the idea of mutants in general, and certain mutants that already exist, I think you could just claim were activated by Thanos' snap um, during the uh, process. And during that process. And so their mutant powers have been active for the five years that no, nothing's really been going on. It's just that They've been trying to get a whole handle on them, not really understanding what they are, not necessarily eager to to jump into being superheroes, uh, or that anyone would have known about them, in, and that would be the reason why they wouldn't have been in Endgame. There are rumors that they're, they might try to introduce Rogue in the uh, Captain Marvel sequel. Although, I'm not... Captain Marvel's biggest problem right now is that she's too powerful, and that's kind of sidelined her from being involved in a lot of the action uh, that took place in, uh, in Endgame. Yeah. So introducing Rogue and having Rogue do to Captain Marvel what she did to Miss Marvel in the comics and cause her to go, I think, into a coma from just being exposed to Rogue's touch for too long and then Rogue getting an approximation of her powers. Um just seems like another way to take Captain Marvel off the table for something. And at some point, you want the character to actually do something in a movie named after the character. I enjoyed the original Captain Marvel movie. I know that there were some people who did not. Um, but obviously, for a character who seems pretty important just on basis of how powerful she is for... Uh, what happens next in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You can't keep writing plots where she never 
does anything. You could get away with that in Endgame because she was being the I, I would say the galactic pol patrolman I in a sense. Just be glad you ain't in pieces. Um. But the second Captain Marvel movie really needs to have Captain Marvel in it. Of course, the first one did. She just was depowered for most of it because she still had her Kree uh, controlling stuff on her that she didn't realize was Kree controlling stuff. Alright, so now we're in a small boss fight here against Titanium Man. Um, as you can see, he he fires bombs. He also has restraining bolts. Uh, he creates earthquakes with his fists. I mean, he's an evil Iron Man in the sense that there are several evil Iron Men. Alright. A little bit of a telepathic fastball there, uh, combining Jean Grey and Wolverine's powers. You can see there, you know, he's firing in a particular direction, so I'm trying to hit him from the other side. Uh, I'm also using Wolverine, so again, I'm trying to take advantage of the fact uh, that I get the health regeneration. My AI companions aren't doing a very good job of dodging his silliness going for a targeted fusion here follow me Kiros, if you dare and deciding that defeating us later rather than now is a better idea he runs off but to be fair this isn't a uh, New York State good to meet you you've done us a great service you heroes are okay in my book. Maybe we should Sorry. Put this registration business on hold. You know, it... no kidding, Bub. You can't expect the X-Men to reveal their <laughs> names to them. Say no more, Knucklehead. Not everyone fears and hates mutants. Well, best of luck trying to catch that maniac. Hearing like our state Stanley's Martin voice. Excelsior. You know, it, it, know you we're we're something? still You don't look like the voting type. Yeah, hey guys, I'll take these it's not too soon, but uh give me a call if you want to hang out again. Americans, your debts are waiting. Here you are once again, a nation divided. Yes, Titanium Man taunts Wolverine, a Canadian. <laughs> 